This is a video on uh, draw a complex part. Uh, for those who are watching the full series of these things uh, for Product 310, uh, what you're not seeing is my last two attempts. This is my third attempt <laughs> at drawing the sprocket. Um, it is the most complex thing we're gonna draw here. The first time I drew it, I spent too much time on the construction, uh, old school, and uh, it took two hours or so. Second time I drew it and it was a little, uh, kind of a bad amalgam of the two. And it was actually misproportioned, which was a mistake on my part. So it turns out even I'm having a bit of a problem with this. Um, it is a complex part. It doesn't seem so bad. This is a worn, uh, I'm going to flatten out the shape. So to get rid of the wear patterns on this, the shark fin look, uh, I use this quite a bit as a younger person back in the ancient mists of time, the nineties. Um, it's, it seems at first quite straightforward until you, the more you look at it, the worse it gets. One of these types of things, um, notice there are 12 teeth. And unfortunately, nine splines. One of the spline teeth is a different shape, meaning mount this way. So it stops you mounting it incorrectly. There are three little recesses maybe for a tightening tool. Uh, on the back, uh, there is a sort of friction surface, along with some designations. I'm just trying to get this to light up here. Uh, we've got some daylight today, so there's the back, which we won't be drawing. Um, but again, this would be quite tedious to draw. It would just be simply sketch out all these little uh, knurlings, flat knurls. Uh, again, a quite complex uh, casting in this case. Uh, some designations, how many teeth, all that sort of stuff. On the top, again, try and get the daylight on it. You can see this pattern. Uh, what I'd like to draw your attention to is that the teeth themselves are actually chamfered on the tips. And they're actually not all chamfered the same way. This is to get the chain to rise a little higher or more efficiently. So this is a very complex part. Um, this is, I would say to me these days with lots of CAD available, uh, sort of limit of something we would attempt to sketch. Um, what I'm gonna be doing today, I hope, is uh, in my hopefully last attempt at this thing uh, to draw it quite rough. Um, quite uh, almost artistically I hesitate to use those words for those people who are actually artists watching this sorry um, for the rest of us I'm trying to get this down enough that we can show a CAD person what we want uh, without getting too carried away uh, with details uh, we will discover details as we go along so this part will be hopefully the, the most extreme version of the find the shape inside the construction I will be using erasers uh, liberally, perhaps. Uh, and I'm gonna go with a little bit of layout first. Uh, for me, I'm gonna be using a lead holder with a B pencil, a thin eraser for detail work in the erasing and a thin pencil, uh, 0.7 millimeters in a big eraser. We'll be using our, again, if we've been watching the series, uh, you'll be able to see the same thing. We are ah, dropped the eraser there. I'm going to be using this diametric 4515, which is close to a standardized uh, diametric, but this will make it easier for us to keep track of things. It's even, a la isometric on one face, and the back 45 angle is a measure of about two thirds for us because this is quite a thin part. It's not going to make much difference. We're going to sketch essentially the shape we want on this front face. So the depth will not go that far back, so it won't really make much difference. The key thing is the angles, 45, 15. Uh, I've pre-measured this, so if you wanna pause your video and take a look at this. Uh, we have 12 teeth, and nine splines, along with these three uh, locking shapes, I suppose, tool, uh, recesses. There's three of those. They're aligned on the teeth. So if we count round one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we'll have those every time. Key thing here is that the chain has a, a plain bearing, more or less. 
and it sits in the in between these teeth. So I'm going to be actually trying to make sure that this is obviously working. And I was in the previous videos I spent quite a bit of time getting these angles set up in projection. Uh, this time we're actually just going to take a stab at doing it by eye. So this is going to be our biggest deviation from our standard construction. Off we go. Uh, I'm also trying to keep my head out of the video this time. I tend to put my head in there. Uh, the camera's fairly high up. You have to see this whole page. I'm using a large page. Again, uh, I think it's about 17 by 24 or so inch. Uh, I'm going to start with a square construction uh, and a unit and all that sort of stuff. Now, uh, I'm going to begin here with just a line up through the middle. It's not even close to straight. First error. Nice. Doesn't bode well, does it? So, trying to keep my line vertical and straight. Holding the pencil extremely loose. Way at the back. In the middle. So this is very loose. Uh, if we want, we can see where the flat is. I want to go 15 degrees up. Similar to the... Uh, projection that we have. This will lay out our ellipse uh, and I'm going to pick a fairly small um, size here. So I'm just looking for a piece of paper to use for my uh, ruler. Just getting a piece of paper. I've used this before uh, just to make my uh, ad hoc room. And do a zero to something. Now, I want to use something that's a reasonable size, uh, not too big, because uh, I'd like the circle to be around, this is going to be our inner circle, the 20 millimeters on the actual part. I'm just going to make that my unit and just make sure that I've got lots of room. So kind of five fingers, it's even maybe a little big. So this is my chance to size my part. There's my one. Again, I'm going to use my ruler frequently here just to keep this from getting way too much. Just a big mass of smudge. I also keep track of my eraser a bit. Or my ruler, sorry. So there's our unit. The unit is essentially the radius of our circle, which is 20 millimeters in the real part. So we can use this to keep track of uh, the sizes and make sure our proportions stay about right. We know our tangencies. Make sure I'm actually focused here and just trying to keep our uh, ellipse as smooth as possible um, 15 degrees isn't too much so we shouldn't be getting too much of a, a crazy uh, shape here so, uh, I do have to move my page from time to time. The camera mount is kind of in the way. So just keeping an eye on it, making sure that it's fairly, trying to keep it as smooth as we can. A little bit of fixing is okay. Now that is our inboard. So this is going to be the root of our uh, teeth. What I want is a quarter. 20 is our unit. 5, which is our tooth length, is a quarter of that. So just folding up my sorry, so you can see what I'm doing. Folding my sheet twice. First to find a half, and then again to find a quarter. Uh, from my previous attempts at this, I know there's an eighth coming as well. So let's do that one more time. So fold it one more time to get an eighth. Now 
the goal here is not to be ultra accurate, but to show a, for example, a machinist or a CAD person uh, what you want. So let's, we're just going to use this to kind of guide ourselves. Like, for example, that's how far a quarter is. Because I'm on the orthogonal axis, I can measure directly. But I can't, for example, measure this way. So I have to draw my ellipse again. One quarter unit out. This is the size of the teeth. Now, let's have a look here. Does that look about right? Yes. Right. So the teeth, compared to the overall diameter, are quite small. So always keeping an eye on our part. And trying to follow the shape that we've already set up. So just carefully going around. And adding another arc or ellipse, which is our circle in projection. Again, sorry, rotate the page here slightly. And there's our setup. Now, what I want to do is split this into 12. We're going to have teeth at that position vertically. So we have 12 teeth, so luckily we've already aligned four of those teeth. In between we need, again if we look at the part, looking at the part here, uh, I'm going to pick one of these. You can see one of these splines is a bit bigger for mounting direction. I'm going to call that tooth number one at the top. So we have one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So we need two teeth on each segment here. That will give us 12 altogether. So it's tempting here to do the construction again. What I'm going to try and do here is just lay out by eye. It's a little tense. So I'm going to try and keep these even. So I'm just trying to get these segments to look balanced. Now we have to one of the things I'm assuming here is that we have a we've developed an eye over the past couple of sketches for proportion and all this sort of stuff. What I'd like to do is keep these about the same. As I go down here, it's gonna spread out quite a bit more. And for the purest amongst us, and for those who want to see more way more construction, it's not gonna happen. Um, this is not perfect, I agree, and I understand. But we have to try and show re relatively rapidly what is going on. So I'm just trying to make sure these distances are about the same. If the middle one's a little longer, that's more correct. That's okay. This one might be a little smaller. So again, trying to use my finger here and my eye to figure out where... Now, we've done half of the circle. All we have to do is just pull it across. Trying to keep those fairly straight. There's our 12 positions. Essentially clock hours. So, I'm also going to uh, get a get a start here and try and get towards where these splines are. Now, what we've essentially what I'm proposing is what we've drawn on here is the top face of the tooth, the collar or the mounting spacer for the chain sticks out. It's also enough so that we can actually engage this on the cluster or the piece of the the wheel that the bike has driven the power through. So we need to have a piece sticking out. This is where our 45 degree angle comes into, into effect. So I'm going to say that at this point here, the metal sticks out. Teeth are flattish, so we have a no cylindrical shape on top. Um, sometimes it helps to give ourselves a little helping hand here just to get started. What is 45? It's halfway between this right angle. So now we have a 45 here. How far, are, how far out does it stick? Well, I measured it previously. It's five millimeters thick, which is actually the same as the tooth size. Now, the problem is that we've got the width as well. So if we look again very carefully here, quickly, sorry, and maybe carefully. 
our total width from the side here is five. We've got two millimeter thickness of the two, so it's kind of just under half of that. So I'm gonna take that into account here. So we have a two millimeter thickness, two and five, the whole thing is a quarter. What I'm gonna do is say, well, it's a two fifths, half of the quarter is an eighth, so it's a little less than that, I'm gonna say it's right there. So I'm just doing an arbitrary measurement here. I'm gonna make a big deal about this because we'll use this size all the way, we call it X. So that's the thickness, that'll be our three millimeters versus two, two millimeters, three millimeters. So given all that, we can use the ruler also to try and keep our eye straight. It's very easy to mess this up. So at the angle, so at the bottom edge where it comes down to this nine o'clock position, I also want to be at 45. So I want this to be parallel in reality, parallel in the sketch. Make sure we're good. So parallel, parallel. It's hard, it's easy to deviate here, very easy. It's a little bad. And what I'm gonna do is replicate this arc again. So we're extruding this arc up, which is a quarter of our ellipse, which is essentially the part uh, in space coming up in 3D. Now, if we wanted to, which is probably not a bad idea, we also need a center of that circle. So if we draw a line straight down, we should end up about a quarter of it. So there's our vertical. So the segment starts to become more obvious here. Getting a little bit of deviation here, it's not bad. Now if we want, for example, one thing we can do is actually just mark this over and say, well, here's the other side. And we should find that it gives us the correct measurements. Again, if we do the, another radius down, we should find that we're fairly close to right angle, uh, 45. So for example, this will be a hidden edge, hidden surface, but we can replicate this part of the arc around. Again, if we want to draw our eye to this correctly. So we've now drawn two halves, two quarters, sorry, we want to go. So I want to connect these two marks together. Notice as we go around, we start to run into and overlap the previous edge. So I'm gonna take again, sorry, the camera mount is in my way here. It's gonna go, what am I connecting? If I've got this right, no, sorry. I'm rotate it around, trying to get this right. So, Want to connect these top parts, I'm keeping things under control here. Back to normal. What we should find is the silhouette here is also at 45. That looks good. So, next thing's next. Um, I'm going to leave the teeth for now and work, do a little bit of work on this. Uh, shape here. Now what I like to do as I go along is start to darken things I know I can see to simplify my future problems. So as we come around here we overlap and hit this lower edge. Then this edge is down here is more uh, is visible. And it will be in the final part as well. This is I'm still not drawing the full heaviness yet, but I'm just trying to show the cylinder shape sticking out of the back of the part. Again, lots of moving around here. Again, you could probably be turning your page here to keep this straightforward. Nice. So, oh, <laughs> I missed all that. Um, drew some stuff. So we've got a cylinder. I'm going to redraw a piece of it. All I was doing was finishing off 
There's, there's some fuzziness in here. That's okay. And just kind of keep them going around. So I don't know how far I've, how long I've been doing that. Not too long, I hope. Well done, Colin. So there's our shape right now. And we've got the cylinder attached to the front. If I had this covered, I'm just going to reiterate what I have finished here. So drew the circle at the back, stepped it forward, and kept on trucking. Now, if uh, I'm going to pause there, if you want to replicate that. Sorry about that, if I uh, covered it up too much. You can see here that there are some mis hidden parts where the teeth will be and some visible parts. So this is our beginning, uh, where we kind of get started with stuff here. Two millimeters is a constant thickness. Um, the, for example, the thickness of this rim is the same as the gear tooth. And it kind of sticks out again uh, for the spline. So the next step we're going to pick here is figure out where the splines are sitting. Let's do a little bit of measurements. Um, what I want to do is actually draw another ellipse, which is the internal spline. I've previously measured this in previous sketches. It's about an eighth. So from an eighth to a quarter, or from zero to an eighth, however you want to do this. So our next edge, this will be the inside Of the splines. This one kind of already has a line which we can kind of reuse. However, it's going to deviate up, trying to keep it even or seeming even. So there's our. Uh, inner rim. This will be where the splines live. Now, right before we get started, we know, for example, if this is our top point, we're going to have a split, the little tooling holes or gate couches or whatever they are, is at noon. And then we've got one, two, three, four o'clock. Four o'clock. So this is our next and then again at five, six, seven, eight o'clock. So four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's our three places where these uh, gouges are going to live. So we're going to have 12 teeth, three depressions or gouges or divots or whatever I make up for the next time. And then the splines, there's nine of them. So in between each of these is two splines. So each of these has a spline below. Sorry. Two in between. So that's our plan. We're going to leave the splines till later and get started with the teeth here. So using our piece as a guide. Now again, we're going to build in the missing part here if we can. So we have a tooth up here. I'm going to say it's about an eighth again. All right, it's about the same thickness as what we just did. Uh, so if I look at this and the tooth on the real part, it's about an eighth. So this one is close to measurable. The next one is a little bit further off, so it's not a big deal. See, it's right here. And just, yes, I know it's not exact, but it gives us an idea of where to start. So going around and saying, showing ourselves this is kind of an eighth at each tooth tip. Just to give us an idea of what we should be kind of doing. This one's already vague. And again, vague. Just trying to... I'm actually looking at the other side of the sheet here, trying to keep the teeth even looking. 
Now, in between each of those is the midpoint of that arc. Now, the, there is a little tiny bit, like a little uh, gap between the bottom of the tooth and the beginning of this piece of where we can see it. Just kind of measuring in uh, the offset. So the tooth does not come right down to the bottom. This is hidden. Hidden. Hidden, but in the back. So I'm following this edge around. So this is an overlap line, so I'm just carefully going around. You can see this is the edge right here now. And then we hit the top. So following our hidden edge now, you can see it kind of coming around here. This is a harder piece. So coming up and around. So lots of layout. But it does give us a chance to say, okay, well, if I assume this is kind of circular and then straight. So the plane bearing of the chain has to sit in here. So, and I believe, if I remember right, the circular part should be about the same, and then there's straight segments going up to the end of the tooth. So even though a, a lot of this, these teeth will be invisible or hidden, just kind of going across and trying to, what we'll have is essentially a wider set or wider angle here as we go through the stretched out parts of this circle and as we cross over we'll start to get tighter uh, angles now i'm gonna go around after this and make sure things are looking right this for example is quite tight it doesn't look quite right so i might end up moving some of these Some of the arcs are too big, some are too small. So we're gonna try and keep things under control. But we see the shift that we're having here, it's quite serious. As we go around each of these uh, bases of each root, root, I suppose, of each tooth is gonna be quite a bit different from the others. So for example, you see, this should be kind of similar. What we need to do here is try and keep the arc at the bottom about the same and we end up with teeth getting quite spread out. Trying to look at it, see if it looks right. So even though we've just, for example, seen how much this angle shifts as we go around, it should look, if we stand back, kind of even and correct, like a starburst right now, or a sunburst. So we're not doing too bad. Again, some of them are looking a little tight. Like this one seems too small and the next one too big. So one thing we can do is kind of cheat a little bit and push it slightly over. Right, so just shifting it slightly off to give ourselves a bit more room with this compressed one right in here. It's not bad. So next, uh, there is some thickness to this. We'll come back and do that later. Moving on to the sp splines. Got some, sorry. Just kind of trying to keep track of what's happening here. Uh, just to remind myself what's happening, I'm actually going to put some thickness in here. Again, if we come back here and have a look, we said the thickness of the tooth is there. So that thickness will be visible here and here. So I'm just going, it's not exactly correct, but just give myself an idea of what I would like to do later. So again, follow the shape. And everything at 45. So just to remind myself what tooth thickness is coming. Now on this one, we've got a depression. So for example, where the tool fits, it's quite close at the end here. It's almost the width of the tooth. So 
I'm just going to bring some marks across to show me the width of the tooth on that edge. Goes up and almost gets to there. It's not, a, not quite a tooth width. Goes back along those projections I just did and doesn't get to that back face either. So it's right now what we have is it looks like a piece of paint maybe on the front outside edge of the thing. So what it does kind of said well here's our edge depending on the exact angle. It's kind of a segment of an arc, a circle. It's not tangent here, so just kind of continue on up. To put the back socket in, to make it into a socket, we have to rep repeat this from here. So again, follow, follow. All of a sudden we have an arc. Again, if some other construction is getting in the way, lighten that out a bit. Around this, which will be kind of pointing at the middle, will be the spline. Hold on, I'm trying to remember my theory here. Yeah. I believe the spline is going to be pointing at the middle, if I remember right. We'll, we'll do one to get ourselves set up. See the amount of sort of material left behind. Get it about the same. Pointing at the middle. So we'll get this right. So. Looking not too bad. Trying to make it even looking. And it's about halfway for the spline. So our final spline shape with this one looks like so. It's rounded because it's a casting. So there's our first spline. We'll use that as the guide for the rest. So round in here to save some time, we'll put the halfway mark first. Transfer our tooth. It's right down in here. Can't really see it. So I don't know if I could figure out what a 45 was. Use that same thing. It's going to come to about here. Am I doing this right? Yeah. Go into the middle. And go into the middle. So that's our tooth, so then we need an arc. It goes close to the edge of that rim, but not all the way, into the back of the part. And again, this is going to be quite squashed here, so we won't be able to see it necessarily. But we do know where it starts, so again, repeat and repeat. So this would come around in the hidden side and join to that back. Last one over here. So this is the tooth we're interested in. Uh, we have to go from 45, so again 45, apparently comes up the back, up the back, and towards the middle. So taking the tooth from the back up or up the rim and then into the middle shows us our point that we're interested in. This one's quite long because it's on the stretched part of the ellipse. So we want to be close-ish and then back up just inboard. Um, it does go back in the part. So for example, Will we be able to see this middle part projected backwards? So at 45, where are we here? 45 goes to there. We will not be able to see that. So we can kind of give ourselves a help here by projecting everything back if we wish. And we can show the hidden part if we want. But that will be invisible. So that's our edge. Now we have a tooth behind that. So it's going to just poke out. But we will not be able to see the back 
edge. So that's going to be completely hidden inside the rim. So each of these requires a uh, sprocket underneath. So again, pointing at the middle to the halfway mark. Coming up and around. About the same on the other side. Same on this side. Again, trying to. So we have our rim here, so it's about halfway through the rim. A bit of material around, ignoring construction that's already in there. And just. So there's our three. Now, there is one unfortunate thing here. This is where this part gets quite complex. At the back, where the splines are, they're flush on the front to the rim. But on the back, they do not make it all the way to the back face. They're actually truncated. Uh, just, so each of these splines is a almost like a little stub part and we will probably be able to see the back sorry hold on yeah very it's actually a quite a complex surface inside so what we're going to do is try and keep this under control so if we pick a middle of our spline this spline will be entirely visible if we go up at 45 Parallel. Oops. <laughs> parallel. Not parallel. Sorry. Uh, you'll notice that, again, if we're having a hard time here, vertical, horizontal, 45. The circle, all the circle construction actually makes it really quite hard to get this right in here. We had a depth here. That we had for the the circle uh, circular rim. I'm gonna pick that again. So parallel reality, parallel on the sketch. Replicate this arc as best we can. I'm actually gonna draw this one spline as a sample. So there we go, so peaky for it. Now the problem is that the full rim is a quarter. So it actually sticks beyond that. So if we go to these lines, actually see the rim, it pokes past. So we have this combination of spline which only goes partly way down the rim. You can see the rim. Just make this darker here so you can see what's going on. So that's our rim in this position. So this line here has to go all the way out a quarter, which is the rim thickness. The spline is just this X to a quarter depth. So we have to be a little careful here. So this is where the complexity all starts ramping up here for this part. So we've got a spline, which is partial and a rim which is full. So what I'm going to try and do is draw the, only the visible parts here. I'm going to draw the splines first and then draw this rim back in the back. So I'm going to start with the visible parts and move back into receding parts. If you're wondering what the noise is, that's the dog bars. So we've got three splines already. In between each of these splines of interest, which we have, are two more. Let's see, two and two. So, for example, between these two, there are two more. Now, what I'm actually going to do is erase some of my construction. So, I can focus on these two center points. So, there's my center of spline. And I want two equally in between here. Now, again, 
this will be not easy to do this. It's quite a span. But again, we're going to try our best to keep these somewhat even. Again, it may, if you want to be more exact, what you should find is this middle one's more spread out. So I'm going to kind of shift that a little bit. So to make it look correct, these two should be the same, and this one should be a little bigger. So using my finger, <laughs> just not the best ruler. So we should see smaller and then bigger. Doesn't actually look that bad. These ones will be not visible around the back because we won't be able to see the front. Splines are the way they are. The in, so the positive and the negative should balance out. So this one might be kind of coming up through here. Going across, maybe here-ish. Trying to go through the middle. Again, we're going through the middle of my rim. Trying to, and ignoring that big one for now, like this one is larger. So, trying to keep things looking balanced. It's not bad, this one's too small. Move it around a bit. Trying to find the balanced looking this one's still too small so I don't want this one to be too much bigger than this but again I don't want the negative to outweigh the positive space it's not bad there so this is very like there is ways to construct this, don't worry about that. Um, but the ways of constructing this can be extremely painful. Um, now, what I'm going to do is use this middle part. This is the middle of that cylindrical face. If I pull this down through and out to the other side, it gives me, within reason, right, where this could be. This should match over to here. Hold on, am I doing that right? Let's not do that. Again, erasing or keeping track of the construction. Sorry, what I just did, I'm stopping. So it's, I need two in between here. These are much more compressed. So, again, these are quite tight. They should all be kind of the same. Just trying to get it balanced. So these are the centers of my... Uh, Splints. So I'm kind of having a guess, trying to keep and track, keep and well, keep track of these edges, and see where things are going to be quite happy or not. Again, halfway across through the room, and really guessing some sizes in here, trying to get it to look smooth. This one's getting a bit big actually, so I'm taking some material away from my original. Trying to balance the positives and negatives. This is the same problem. It's, the original is too big. So I can easily just take some stuff off here. And I'll rebuild it later. If we take it off this side, we should take it off this side. So finding our shapes, which is what this video is all about. So. Sorry, I was probably a little zoomed uh, earlier in the video, but this is where it's what we're trying to do. So that's not too bad, actually. So now the last one is between these two guys. So I need two more in here in this gap. So Aim at the middle of these. Halfway through the rim. There's one, two, there's another one. So let's have a look here and see what we've got. Just 
dark in the moon, dark in the moon, dark in the moon. a little bit of too much material in here, I suspect. So, adjusting our original uh, splines that are too big. Also, not bad. Uh, see how it goes for now. So there's our nine. Now I'm gonna start putting the, the parts of the splines in that I can see parallel, parallel, parallel. This will start getting hidden. Parallel, parallel, parallel. Try trying to again, <laughs> you can see I'm going way off already. Actually the original one wasn't very good. So fixing and uh, oh man, it's crazy bad. Parallel, parallel. So sometimes uh putting something up there to keep our eye happy. So the temptation is to go with the circle. It's really actually quite hard to ignore that. One of the big dilemmas for this part. So it's okay for now, just keep an eye on that. And our measurement here again. So we'll transfer that around. Give ourselves a bit of a helping hand. And if you want, this should also, of course, be an ellipse, which is the edge of our circle. Now, I'm in no way saying that this is straightforward. Um, this is why this is my <laughs> third, try, third try at this. Uh, so I've had some practice uh, getting this all sorted out. Um, but just kind of keep it on the straight and narrow. Should be okay. Eventually we kind of recede away and everything gets hidden. Again, parallel, parallel. Won't be able to see these. Be able to see this one. Parallel, parallel. This one we'll be able to see going backwards. Maybe there, no, not here. And again, again, it'll start to enlarge over here. It's not bad. No. The next thing is this next ellipse. Uh, going from the back here, for example, just picking this quarter. Go to mark. Go to mark. And then it'll be hidden back over here somewhere. So again, just following our marks. Kind of ignore everything else. So there's the rim. What about back over here? 45. It's going to stop being visible right around here. At this angle, so say it's about aiming right about there. So there's our rim. So again, finding just sort of basic construction. I'm putting a contour line in here. Uh, what this will do is essentially. Kind of, it's not going to help. We're going to, well, maybe actively let uh, smooth these out as we go along. But we're just going to keep track of our angles here. So, for example, I can see these are not parallel. Oh, here we go. Top of the tooth. Get to get a rolling ruler here, actually. Crazy. So, working on the teeth now. Hidden. 
hidden probably. Not hidden. Not hidden. This will be uh, it's potentially very slightly showing. Again, just for, because we're on the orthogonal, we can measure all these. So the space we picked, just give myself some again helping hands from time to time. Hidden. Angles all over the place here. So last one. So just kind of matching the shapes. Again, if you need some help as you go along. Now I'm going to start paying attention to what's hidden and what's not. And this angle is going to be more or less hidden by this, but we won't be able to see this part of the teeth. Hidden. Hidden mostly. So for just following the arcs that we have. And this can be quite strange until we get around to here. So this one is almost all visible, but then barely shows up there. So I'm trying to keep the shapes looking correct. Kind of, we might be able to see some up there. It's probably unlikely. There's our teeth. Nope. See here, we've got some strangeness that most of these look okay. The one that I'm not liking is right up in here. This one looks to me like it's too tight. Like this one's receding around and going okay. These ones are fine as well. This, because it's hidden, will be okay. So what I'm going to do is actually move, kind of move this bottom tooth over by just redrawing it slightly over. So again, is this completely kosher around here? Nope. Is it okay? Yep. So just moving the tooth around the curve slightly to close up these angles. And then kind of have a look. So I'm standing quite far off here. This tooth needs a bit of shift as well. Move it over. And all I'm trying to do, this is a big cheat as far as technical sketching goes, have it look correct. And so it should look a bit goofy, a bit a bit more over. And it's too thick. So we're now into full on sort of have it look right mode. This one is way too far over. So I'll have it come across. Might even shift this root circle a bit. A little steeper. Looks better. Again, if things get messy, just have a go at getting stuff erased out of there. Using the big eraser with abandon is what this is. So looking for the tooth to be good. You know it has to come down here and about the middle. And just repair that in a way. That's a better arc. Now because we've moved it, we might actually be able to see this all the way now. Again. 
Oh, see, that's better. It's not so jammed here. So just trying to make this thing look regular. Again, because we're on a isometric ish, we're in a diametric here. It's going to look a little strange for a while. We're almost ready to kind of finish off. This. See, it's a long way. Sorry about that. So next is the teeth are actually not regular. We mentioned at the start there's chamfers. Next thing here is some chamfer starting at 12 o'clock. I've got a little dot in one of the teeth here. So everywhere there's a chamfer on this part here, I'm going to put a check mark. I'll just show what that is. In a second. So everywhere there's a chamfer, where they trimmed away the front of the tooth, I'll put a check. So that's a check. Move it around, one o'clock. Two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock. No, there's a very subtle detail on the part. Five o'clock, yes, six, seven, eight, but nine, no. Uh, moving from the top here, this one has a tiny chamfer, I'll put an exclamation for that, so 11, 10 has no, 9 has yes, sorry, I'm losing track of where I was there around the circle. So we've got essentially two which have reversed chamfers, one has a really tiny chamfer and the rest have normal chamfer. I'm going to start switching to my thinner pencil here. So working my way around and almost starting to put some final edges in here. So I'm saying about half of the tooth has been removed by the chamfer and it's about halfway down the tooth. Again, you can see I've got a small problem here. I'll just start to tidy that up. Is it looking funny? Yes, it is. Nice one. First one I do. Oh, this. Start again. So trying to follow, follow the arc properly. So rebuilding the tooth a little bit at the tip here just to say hello, this is correct now. Nope, I'm not being able to use my pencil. So starting to, for the first time, get our tooth chamfered properly. So our next one is chamfered again, check. So about halfway down, halfway through the tooth. Nice. Halfway down, halfway through the tooth. Again, I haven't drawn the back of this, but the distance is the same. This is going to start coming, getting close to the edge of the rim here. So about halfway down. This one is flat. Um, we won't be able to see, there's actually a chamfer on the back, which we won't be able to see on this one. So we'll just mark that in. This one has a chamfer, it's mostly hidden. So far, we can draw our back hidden face, and then that will come up to a chamfer. Be a little confusing to the viewer, so we might actually leave this construction quite dark. We'll see how it goes. Next one. This is also going to be hidden by the rim. So I'm starting to straighten things out. This one is starting to emerge. Halfway down. Check again, and now we're fully visible. It's going to be kind of in the middle there. Next one has another. Yes. 
I'm just working my way around. Another way to construct these, of course, is build the first three edges and then just connect them together. This one doesn't. It actually has a, line, a chamfer on the back, all of these, these two X's. So it's on the back face. So I can actually draw my chamfer if I wish, like so. Uh, sometimes, this is a habit I, not a habit, someone I was shown when I was small doing this stuff. Um, one thing you can do is actually put a mark to show a discontinuity in the edge and make a big deal about it through that. So it's up to you. I'm going to leave that mark there. It's kind of strange, but it says I'm a corner. This one actually has a chamfer, but it's very short. About half the rest. It's, I'm assuming to ramp the chain up properly when you're doing a gear change. So it's a really short chamfer. And there we go, like we're kind of there as far as everything goes line-wise. A lot of what we're doing from now on is just final lines. So we're an hour in, nice. <laughs> Sorry about this. And now I'm gonna use my uh, B.7 eraser and kind of more pencil eraser to uh, clean this up and try and get the shapes that I want to emerge out of this morass stuff. So I'm actually going to work my way around uh, the spline face first. I'm going to start from the part closest to us and work my way back into the part. So what, we, what can we see first? Well this rim is most obvious. And yeah I'm not drawing one continuous line. Sorry about that. But just trying to show the rim. Now the rim goes around and comes around the back here. So here it becomes more visible. Ignoring as best I can everything that's back in there. And what we should see, this starts to make the rest of it kind of disappear in a strange way as we draw darker lines on top of blind lines. One of the other things you'll have noticed as I sketch along, I get quite a bit of lead on my hand. It smudges the lead. And because of the order we do the sketch in, it actually makes it kind of blend away into the page. Now, when I was small again, sorry, back when I was a boy, uphill both ways, deep snow, broken legs, um, I was told to uh, never smudge. And I used to draw with my hand off the page, or at least the tip of my pinky nail. Um, I took art in university, and they said, what's the big deal? So... I kind of agree with the art people here. What's the big deal? It smudges the construction and makes it fade. This is not, in my case, what we're doing here in the sketch, I'm going to say that's not bad. So there's our rim. Sorted, that should start to emerge out of our really complicated part. Next, I'm going to do the other side of that rim. So I want to do every continuous piece of material or sort of contiguous. So I'll go around the complicated shape of the splines now. It's not too late to change things. Uh, I think I might end up moving some splines around a bit still, but we're kind of getting to final mark land. Where we want things to be uh, kind of finished. And again, I can't say this enough, I haven't said it very much this time, CAD is really good at these sort of perfect details. We are not. Um, what we're trying to do is use this sketch to either do some design, and this would be fairly serious design right now, uh, or uh, show a machinist what we want to do. As I get up here, I notice that I've forgotten to do my spline at 12 o'clock. The spline beside it actually has a smaller gap. This is to make sure the spline goes in the right way. So this one has an arbitrarily small, I think it's half the size, negative. So as I go around, I'm going to leave this line here to make a point to the viewer that there's a strangeness happening here. So I'm definitely leaving this because I want people, whoever's looking at this abomination, <laughs> to uh, 
realize that there's something going on right in there and it's a major uh, design intent so we would definitely need to leave that in that one of our splines is standard not standard right deviating from a standard spline shape so there's my face panning up I'm gonna put these notches in next as we work our way down through the park so three of these and there's my other again it looks a little bit like paint until I add this now this little mark here for me is a shortcut for it's not it's not an actual edge but more of a round is it completely obvious on the sketch I don't know um, it's not bad I hope again the same here can't see the back of this one now as we come around the 45 degree angle the bottom of this cylindrical shape starts to emerge so we'll do that next I'm being kind of purposefully loose right here as well because I'm trying to show you that this is a round as well so I'm not getting too precise here so for example some lines are kind of overlapping a little bit I want to leave it sort of vague uh, because this is not a sharp corner, it's a rounded corner. So, let's refocus a bit. There's our kind of front part done. Not ignoring the difficult parts here. We have to sort out our quite smudgy uh, depth of spline. Trying to keep this even. This is my next chance to get this fairly uh, even. Again, you can see some problems here. Trying to keep these. It may not be working perfectly. So for this one, for example, it's so close to being edge on. I'm just going to ignore this little one right here for now. I also have to make this match up. So I'm not going to join this part to end of them. So it just kind of comes down and loses itself in the flat or the, the cylindrical surface. So again, down in here. Got this coming around and then it comes down matching this part and then just kind of loses itself. Again, terrible angling. You can see these are bending out. This is a definite time to fix. So, trying to keep these correct. This one will be visible actually. This one will not. So, trying to keep these looking correct. Parallel, parallel. Just take a little fix up there. Again, someone's the only reason I'm erasing that is if it makes it hard to understand what's happening. So again, parallel, 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 parallel. So just rotating things around to get it correct. Again, this is gonna come out and join on to the cylindrical face. Parallel. Again, kind of getting stuff wrong here from time to time. Uh, well, we'll have a tiny edge here. We can accentuate that and then run to the top. With our splines kind of done. This is the back of our rim. I'm trying to do a little practice run first here before I get carried away. Now we're really close to this one, so I'm going to actually pull it back a bit to make it more obvious that there is a corner here and then poke out above this one. First use of the thin eraser. I'm going to clean this one up if I can. It's fine. Cleaning my eraser on a piece of wood back here. 
trying to get that quite thin. I need that to be very clear. So the difference between these, see this one kind of goes in behind and then this one comes out in front. This will help the viewer understand that these are separate pieces of material. Kind of hides, hits this and then hides behind it. It's not bad as far as I can see it's reading correctly. So these look like they're sticking out. This looks like it's in there. Now it looks like there should be something in here. I'm just going to add, it's not completely correct. I'm just trying to say that this one comes around and joins at the back. Cheat. But that's okay. So, now the teeth. Any little fix-ups or little smoothening or whatever you want to call it as I go around. Joining things up correctly, uh, making the connectivity correct, uh, and just kind of following my construction as best I can, but not to the point where it makes it difficult to understand what's happening. So just kind of Take my time going around the part, making the joins of the parts very clear. So what connects to what and how. So chamfer then down into here. So easier for me to start over here. So here's my chamfer and then down and around. So just try to clarify what angles are what, and what's joined to what. This one jumps down and hides behind the part. This one has a small piece visible, or it's like a tooth shape or so. It'll read correctly if we've been careful enough, and leave the construction on so that the viewer understands that this is just a tooth most more or less hidden by this rim. This has no chamfer on the front. Again, if you want, we used this angle out here before. You can put the angles on the back just to say something's happening in there. You can't see it. Yeah, just a guess. This one is also going down and in. Come back and darken this rim up later. Next. Sometimes the lines don't look parallel, so you can, this is your chance to clarify things. So for example, this little should maybe curve a bit more. Just to emphasize that this is all the overlapping uh, features here. So chamfers versus uh, simple shapes. And goes down again. This one's a little more difficult. Let's say it goes like so. Yeah, this goes through quite a bit of lead. Hopefully, I have more in here. You're gonna watch a video of nothing for a while. Come on, how exciting! Colin. Advancing a mechanical pencil. There we go. So, straight chamfer. It won't be perfectly straight. Again, it is a cheat. The chamfer faces are all slightly curved, but I'm trying to make a point here by straightening them. Coming back around to the start. And our small chamfer. reaching between the camera mount around to our fixed tooth now this is kind of edge on I don't want to make this too big I'm gonna thin it down here and sure it might not be completely correct but I'm just trying to make it obvious what's going on I mean, if in doubt make it obvious that's not bad 
Um, if something looks like it needs some work, or a little bit of extra lead, now's your chance. Um, we're almost there. I'm going to do a bit of cross hatching here. Every time, for example, uh, we deviate out of plane, we want to emphasize that. The obvious ones are these uh, depressions here. Now, there is a lot of theory, of course, about how to shade correctly, and we're going to deviate from that. Um, I'm going to say that everything that is flat is white or non-shaded. Uh, anything that uh, deviates away from that is darker. So, for example, this corner is dark, and then as it hits the middle here, the shading fades. As we start to get an angle again, we get darker. I'm using quite a thick uh, lead here, and it is really blunt. One thing I can do is use the usual smudging to blend that into one. And if I wish, I can use the paper itself as a guide to protect the back, darken that up. It looks like it's sticking out now. Or in, sorry. Um, we won't be able to see this one again. And we have the same argument over here. So this one will be dark as it deviates, and then as it gets towards the bottom, we'll lighten it. A little bit of smudging. If we find that this is making things too, uh, it's smudging it too much, we can either block it with the uh, paper, or we can use an eraser to really lighten a small patch around it, which will make the shading or the cross hatching stick out way more. And so this is one way to draw attention to things. One is to darken, the other is to lighten, and of course combo of both will make something seem very clear. So lightening and darkening. Again, we can, for example, if I want to use my bigger eraser, if I don't have a small one, what I can do is actually use the paper to protect it, use it as an eraser shield. So I can use my big eraser to do uh, delicate work here. So this makes my life a little bit easier. What else is deviated? Well, the sides of the spline. Now, we'll continue on with this big lead, or I can start to use my smaller lead, uh, 0.7. Now, sometimes you don't want to smudge too much. I want to keep this quite precise. I'm just going to... essentially just draw simple hatches across these guys to say I'm all kind of the same. I'm pointing into the center of the part. Almost went over here. So that accentuates the shape of the spline, which is not a bad idea. Last but not least, uh, we have to deal with these uh, chamfers. So I'm going to try and pick a more sharper edge of my heavy lead. Let's have a little practice run at this top one again. It's not bad. Maybe a bit of smudging. You'll notice what I just did there. I darkened up the top face, which is not ideal. Because this one is at the rim. It's not a cylindrical surface. Very truncated. It's still cylindrical. This looks okay. Um, I can also do it with a smaller lid, if I wish. One thing I can do to save some time and to be a bit more accurate is to use the paper as a guide or a uh, shield. And if I find uh, I have a tendency, usually, uh, the old Colin special, which is to darken up the corners more than the rest. I don't know why I do this. It kind of appeals to me, though. So, what you can do is kind of old school, try the cross hatching, a little bit of smudging in between, and just go until you're happy. And what you'll see is kind of corners emerging. Uh, 
what I'm really doing here is saying these chamfers are important. Just I'm actually just trying a bunch of different approaches here. Another way is to not be so careless and draw a more accurate cross entry with no smudging. So it's up to you. Um, whatever strikes your fancy, I kind of like these. What I'm doing is following the angles. Kind of gives a nice effect. I find that I don't need the smudging here. It's just a flat shape. So nothing on the next one. Since I've got a new technique. Here's that. And this also tells the viewer that this is a chamfer now because it's cross hatched the same as the other chamfer. So I'm just following the edges of my shape, not perfectly, but close enough. And because I've got some smudging from just using my hand uh, on the part all the way through, we'll automatically get some sort of grayish backgrounds on these guys. Almost done. Uh, I'm just going to turn the page here a little bit. Sorry, I'm trying to keep my head out of the camera. You've probably already seen my COVID here already. Error. Fix that in a minute. It's not a big deal, this one, but it does remove from the precision of the chamfer. If it's precise, I think it is. So. Trying to fill that area. Very nice, methodical, pleasant. This can actually be quite a nice thing to do if you're feeling stressed, studying for exams, going outside for food. Last one. It's kind of the one that's a little bit going from the other to kind of get them to blend together. I'm just going to smudge this one a little bit. I'm going to smudge this one quite a bit as well. This one's deviating because we don't really have enough construction. So, chamfer all the way around. Again, if it's looking a little light somewhere, Add that guy. Almost there. It's been a long march of a sketch. Uh, doing okay. Next things next. Uh, for me, I always put a perimeter around these things. So I'll just do that quickly with my lead holder. Uh, it's quite blunt. I'm using a blunt surface here. So I'm just going around and saying I'm all one part now kind of hiding some stuff. So for example, a little bit of construction there I might have liked to keep it. Uh, just doing it the easy way here. Uh, all similar stuff at once. Again, if you see that you've missed an edge here, it is kind of visible. Just add that. surface so back around and then I'll just start following in these uh, for those who are watching this at real time Probably not advised but if you wanted or if you are. Um, this takes so long I start to dream about this stuff. <laughs> so when I wake at 2 a.m. thinking sprocket. Um, I would recommend not trying to hide 
corners because the corners are the sheep. So if you do have a corner, like for example right in here, try and make sure you don't erase that with these heavier sort of circumference lines or perimeter lines. I'm just trying to draw the viewer to see in this as a one piece. Now we haven't drawn assemblies yet, but this is another way to show assembly and subassembly. It gives us a way to also check that we've done a reasonable job all the way around. Well, definitely not trying to hide that little corner. Making sure I'm doing okay. Got a bit of a mess in here. Sorry, no clearer from the lights, excuse me. So I might want to actually tidy this up. It's a little bit blurry. So I'm using a big eraser and a paper as a shield. Um, just trying to. There we go. And the inside. I'll just go more around the whole thing here. Is that a problem right there? Maybe. No, I don't really like it. Again, spinning myself instead of the page. Gonna make a big deal about this though. It sticks out a bit. So making sure that it's very obvious that the shape is going from smooth to uh, sort of the edge of the spline starting to stick out. So again, as we come around, we see the same over here. That's it for the um, uh, graphic. Clean my eraser on the paper a bit, the little tiny one. Again, you can use the big one with a shield. And what I'm going to do is try and emphasize these top of the teeth. So I'm trying to say to the viewer, look at me. I am special. Um, And you know, if everyone's, everyone's looking a little strange, it's got to tidy up. We did have a problem in here. What I'm going to do is actually erase it out and fix it up. See when it comes down. So I'm just trying to show that clear background um, so that you can see what's going on. Still not too bad. It's a little bit big. His teeth is looking a little blurry. Now one way is to erase it out, another way is just to add some more red. Sorry, I thought I was done. There we go. Uh, crazy long sketch uh, for someone that we usually just take for granted. A uh, little. Um, sprocket from our bicycle. Uh, that's our final position. If you want, uh, you can, for example, take your eraser here and emphasize the shape itself by kind of cleaning out the, the void a little bit around where the perimeter is. Um, it's up to you. Um, the more you erase, though, the more you remove the visual cues which we spent quite a bit of time doing uh, to let the viewers see what was going on. So here we are uh, with a sprocket. Thanks for thanks for watching. Sorry, thanks for watching. An hour and a half. 
the length of a movie. Um, how to draw a sprocket. Again, for those who are kind of worried about this stuff, uh, this is about as far as we would ever go with complexity of sketching. Um, it is fairly serious uh, sort of amount of work to get this done. Uh, it is still, I would argue, faster than CAD. Uh, this would be way more than an hour and a half of CAD here to get this right. So you can maybe get a kind of vague shape down and something like uh, Fusion or something uh, quite quickly. But to get it ready for manufacturing would take quite some time. This would be a, a long slog with repeated attempts to get it right. So we may, in future videos, actually model this in CAD. We'll see how it goes. But there we go. Thanks for watching. Keep an eye out for the next video, uh, which will start to introduce a bit more organic sort of stuff. Nothing this complex again. Uh, and over to you.